We are officially a full week into NFL free agency, and the Chiefs have obviously made some pretty key moves. So I think it's time we update our draft targets on who I could see the Kansas City Chiefs targeting in rounds one and two. We appreciate you watching here on the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jay Sanders, and obviously we've been talking the draft, we've been talking free agency, but make sure you're hitting that subscribe button because as the draft gets closer, closer, our draft coverage is going to be on lock. We got the latest Chiefs draft news. We have in-depth scouting reports on players that I think the Chiefs could draft. And once they do draft them, guess what? We're going to have full ratings for every single player, positional rankings, plus weekly mock drafts. And the best part about all this it's 100% free. It costs you nothing to subscribe. So go down there and hit that button because I would certainly appreciate it. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. Let's talk about the positional needs for the Kansas City Chiefs because I still do believe at the top of the board, it's got to be wide receiver. I know the Marquise Brown signing is great, but I still believe that they need to make sure this room is filled because as of right now, I trust Rasheed Rice. I trust Hollywood Brown. But past that, it's a little stingy. Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, Justin Watson, Justin Ross. I don't know if I fully trust that. Cornerback, I think, is more of a future pick here. Got to make sure that if Snead leaves next year, if they trade him this year, that you're covered in the cornerback slot. Obviously, McDuffie is great, but I want to make sure we have the backbone behind him. Left tackle is still an important position with Wanya Morris as your starting guy right now, but do the Chiefs really trust him? And the defensive line, I know that Chris Jones is a big signing and Mike Pinnell, Derek Naughty are back. I still want to make sure that that line is fully boasted up and ready to go for the 2024 season, especially with Charles O'Menehu injured. So without further ado, let's go into some top 10 draft targets. The first one leading off, Lad McConkey. Now, if you watched our latest mock draft, you'll understand why I have Lad as the number one guy now, because I fully believe that with Marquise Brown, he's the best pick at number 32 because he's got everything the Chiefs don't have in a wide receiver. He's speedy, but he's agility speezy. So he can really make quick moves. He can turn on a dime and ultimately is very good at what the Chiefs don't have right now, which is the under routes and ability to make space in short amounts of space. Played well in his three years at Georgia with his best year being the national championship year for the UGA Bulldogs over 760 yards on 58 receptions and seven touchdowns. But Lad, man, you've seen his highlight tapes on Twitter. This guy is shifty as all get out. I cannot believe a lot of different things that ultimately could lead to this being a really important and key thing for the Chiefs to get in this year's draft. Now, as of right now, PFF ranks him as the 32nd player overall in the NFL draft. He's number six in terms of wide receivers and well, guess what? That fits perfectly with the Kansas City Chiefs and what they want. 32nd on the board, eh, that's where the Chiefs pick. Who do you want the Kansas City Chiefs, though, to pick in round one? Is it Ladd McConkey? Is it a different wide receiver? Is it somebody else that you feel the Chiefs should go after? Well, now's your chance to get down in the comment section. Who's your guy for the Chiefs in round one of the 2024 NFL Draft? Let's continue on here, and I know it's going to be a little surprising, but I'm going to go with Ennis Rakestraw Jr., the cornerback. And why? Well, because either way you slice it, if the Jerry Seed is traded this year, you're going to need a cornerback. If he signs somewhere else next year, you're going to need a cornerback. And this year's CB class, well, it's pretty dang good. And Rakestraw coming from a Mizzou product, hey, he is close at harm. PFF grade of 80, and so overall, again, Solid guy to have, and he reminds me a lot of Trent McDuffie and what he brought to the field. Now, I know that Rake Straw still has some important case pieces to his game. Uh, sometimes he's had a little trouble grabbing onto wide receivers and causing some pass interferences, but overall has really good structure, and I feel as though he's a very underrated uh, quarterback. Plus, we all know about Brett Feach and his ability to really scout cornerbacks well. Well, guess what? And it's Rake Straw Jr., He's liked by Brett Veach. Maybe this is a guy the Chiefs actually go after after talking to him at the Combine. Be interested to see if the Chiefs are pulling the trigger. He would have to be probably your round one pick. Let's continue on here going back to the wide receiver realm with A.D. Mitchell. Matt and I has been my guy for, I got to say, seven months. I mean, I truly believe that he is the best wide receiver that could be available at pick number 32. Just overall on a lot of different facets. I understand that there is the concern of, is he going to be available at 32? But in my mind, if he's there, you have to take him because he has the speed. 
He has the agility. Overall, I just think he's the best wide receiver that could be left there. And so at the same time, you got to go after him. Do I think he's going to be there? I don't really know. I think if you would have asked me that three weeks ago, I would have said yes. But right now, probably not. That's not what I would have said. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I think if he's there, you got to get him. Let's go to the defensive line, a position that I still think needs some help, and uh, especially the interior part of it, just because I want to make sure Chris Jones is going to be able to have some rest options. And uh, Braden Fisk, I'll tell you what, he was probably the most impressive guy to me in terms of combine skills. This dude was absolutely impressing in a lot of different facets, and I really liked what I saw from him. Now, this past year at FSU, played pretty well with a PFF grade of 73.9, and guess what? 18 sacks of his career, 14 hits. But the big number that I absolutely love from this guy, 77 hurries. Are you freaking kidding me? That is insane and really, really freaking good to have on your interior defensive line, especially if you pair that up with Chris Jones. And once again, I want to repeat, this dude was moving at the combine. I mean, absolutely shifty. He was quick. I liked what I saw from him, and he earned himself some money. Now, Fisk is one of them that I could potentially see falling to the second round. Then if you end up trading LeJarius Sneed for an extra second round pick, I wouldn't mind using it on Braden Fisk, depending on where it is, or if the Chiefs, you don't really have too much needs on this team. Combo a third round pick and your second round pick to move up in the second round and go get him. I think that would be a deadly combination to have Felix and Yuduke Uzoma, Chris Jones, Braden Fisk, and then George Carl Loftus on your line. Oh, yeah, and Charles Lemini, he'll be back in like eight weeks into the season as well. You cannot tell me a defensive line that would be more secure than that than maybe the Raiders. Let's continue on here with another Florida State product, a Seminole himself, Keon Coleman, our third wide receiver on this board because I fully believe that's the most important position here, and we have to make sure that the he is the one who is talked about. Now, I will say, I think his draft stock has fallen. Uh, we talked about him probably right after the Super Bowl. He was projected to be one of the better wide receivers left after the top three with Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Romo Dunze. It was him right after that. Not anymore. It's honestly a whole slew of receivers with Ladd McConkey, A.D. Mitchell, Troy Franklin. Maybe he's there at 32. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's there at 64. I mean, this guy could really do a lot of different things. I have worry or have some worries about his separation ability in the NFL because he struggled with that in college. I know that that's an important factor to pay attention to. Now, luckily, he was able to make up with it with his stature and his uh, vertical is really, really great. But is that going to translate to the NFL is kind of the worry that I have. So I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. I do fully, fully believe, though, he is a good guy to have on your draft board. Now, what's good to have on your board is this nice Chiefs Super Bowl championship t-shirt that is nearly 50% off right now, guys. You get all the names of everybody on the team on the back. It's a pretty cool shirt, too. Got the logo on the top corner, champions across the chest, and 50% off. It's usually around 40 bucks, 20 today, 20. If you go to chatsports.com slash champs. You're not going to find a better deal than that. I'm telling you, go check it out. We're going to have this in the links or have this link in the comments in the description of this video. So you want a really cool champion shirt, got all the names on the back. Guess what? Chatsports.com slash KC Champs. Go check this out. 50% off. Get it while the deal lasts. Let's go to the back half of my top 10 targets now with another wide receiver at the top of this list. And that's Tez Walker, the guy who had some uh, interesting uh, seasons here with the NCAA, but still, I fully believe him to be a round two wide receiver draft pick. And comparing him to the other wide receivers I have on my list with Keon Coleman and A.D. Mitchell, he's right on tap with them, maybe a little bit less, which is why I could see him potentially being a, round, or excuse me, a, a pick number 64 round two rather than pick number 32 in round one. Uh, if he's there... Maybe you go and end up Straw Jr. at the first run. You want a wide receiver second, you can get Tez Walker there. Almost 700 yards, seven touchdowns, 41 receptions. And again, this was all in less, than, less games than A.D. Mitchell and Keon Coleman had because of the whole NCAA allegation where he was basically not allowed to play for a portion of the season. So the fact that he was putting up those numbers and a new offense and a lot of different facets with his uh, NCAA stuff going on. I fully believe that he has a lot of positive things. And so I think if the Chiefs see him at round two and they don't take a wide receiver in round one, which is still a very real possibility, then I think you pull the trigger on Tez Walker in round two. 
Now, we've talked about three wide receivers. I know we had A.D. Mitchell in there, but we've talked a lot about him. So I want you to pick one of the three that we haven't really mentioned too much. Ladd McConkey, Keon Coleman, and Devontez or Tez Walker, which one would you like to see the Chiefs have? It's, it's, if it's Ladd McConkey, type an M. If it's Keon Coleman, type a C. If it's Tez Walker, then type a W. Let me know which one of these wide receivers you would rather have on the Kansas City Chiefs squad in 2024. Let's go back to the cornerback box and take a look at some Big 12 products with TJ Tampa, a really good cornerback out of Iowa State. Now, TJ, to me, is a little bit of a smaller cornerback than I would like just because I know he fits what Legereus Snead is in terms of a you know, 6'2 frame, got around 200 pounds on him. I just feel like, given you have Trent McDuffie, who's the same body type as a Legereus Snead, I want a little bit more of a bulkier cornerback. And I know that sounds odd in some facets, but given McDuffie was so good in the, in the Super Bowl covering Debo Samuel, who is one of the shiftiest wide receivers there is, I think it'd be nice to have somewhat of a taller guy so that if you're facing a DK Metcalf, you got somebody to put on him and is able to hang with him. Now, he allowed just a 54.8 QB rating in 2023, which is spectacular. And overall, he fits the vibe of what a Chiefs cornerback and what Brett Beach likes. So be on the lookout for TJ Tampa Plus. Iowa State, not too far from Kansas City. So uh, could definitely see him being a top target for Mr. Brett Beach. All right, number eight here, Rook Orohoro, the defensive lineman from Clemson. I think this guy is honestly my best fit for round two if Braden Fisk isn't there, which I don't really expect him to be. I think he's definitely a second-round choice at number 64, and I truly expect him to be there at pick number 64. Had a lot of good things happen in Clemson, and uh, under the helm of D D Dabo Sweeney, really blossomed into the player that he is today and what could be a second-round draft pick. I think if you're Brett Veach, you look at this again. Your defensive line was great in terms of getting Derek Nottie, Mike Pinnell Jr. You're helping out the defensive line. A good amount, Tershawn Wharton re-signing. But I still feel there's work to be made and making sure that this defensive line is great. And I said it in my mock draft video. Listen, I kind of had a hard time picking who I wanted because the Chiefs are so full at a lot of positions. I think their linebacker room is already solid with their starters. I think they're really, really filled with their safeties. I think they're great with their quarterbacks if Legereus need trade, which stays. So why not just build up depth-wise for years to come and, well, Hopefully, even maybe depth right now. I mean, I think that's what Felix Andy Duque Uzoma was. Guy didn't play that much this year. He was your first round bet draft pick. You won a Super Bowl without him. Now you probably get to see what he's truly made of in it this year. So, again, you're drafting for the future, not just this year. Let's continue on here and go to my number nine slot, which is the first offensive tackle, the only offensive tackle I have in here because I truly think that the Chiefs are going to stick with Wanya Morris. Uh, he had two games starting this past year, played pretty well, one of them being it's the Packers. But Blake Fisher's not a bad option. Uh, if he falls to round three, I think you take him. I don't know if he will, though, but if he's there at your round three pick, you have to get him. Offensive tackle from Notre Dame, I know that he's not Joe Alt, but he's still pretty dang good. And again, the left tackle position for the Chiefs is still a huge question because obviously Donovan Smith looking to be not re-signed. Wanya Morris, who was a rookie last year at Oklahoma, sixth-round draft pick, how much the Chiefs trust him. The more the days go on, it seems the trust is bigger than I maybe think it was or thought it was. So I don't know what their plan is, but I still believe if he is there in round three, you pick him up and you have him as a backup to Wanya, if that's your choice at starting left tackle. I know there was talk of Tyron Smith, but now with him going to New York to play with the Jets, that's no longer an option. Let's go to my 10th and final option. You've been waiting for this one. I know you've been saying, Jace, where the heck is he? There he is, Xavier Worthy, the wide receiver. And you're asking probably, Jace, why is he number 10? Why is he the 10th guy on your draft record? Well, there's a simple reason to this. Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, is what Xavier Worthy was supposed to be with the Chiefs. That's what they were hoping Xavier Worthy was going to be. Well, now Marquise Brown is that. We've seen him play it in the NFL. I don't think you need another speedster wide receiver. They have Justin Ross, who uh, is honestly decently fast. Justin Watson has some speed to him. She rises is speedy. You get a shifty wide receiver, which is Lad McConkey to me. And that's why I feel as though if Whaley is there, maybe they still take him. But in my mind, I want to make sure that I have different types of wide receivers throughout my room, not just a plethora of speed guys. So that's just my opinion, though. Maybe I am wrong. 
I want you to pick a position now, because I know maybe there is some speculation now with Hollywood Brown signing with the Chiefs that they don't take a wide receiver in round one or round two, or maybe they take a, somebody else in round one and then take a wide receiver in round two. Pick one of these three positions that you want the Chiefs to take. Wide receiver type WR, quarterback type CB, or you want a left tackle position to help out that offensive line type LT. Lots of different options for Brett Feach and the Chiefs. We'll have, just sit, we'll have to just sit here and wait to see what he does. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, guys, because we're putting out Chiefs draft coverage throughout the entirety as we head up to the Detroit when Roger Goodell gets on that stage and says, uh, with the first overall pick, the Bears select Caleb Williams. We'll talk about all that comes with the Kansas City Chiefs draft plan right here. So, again, YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. But for now, Chiefs Kingdom. Peace out.